Corey Trepanier's Into the Arctic Video Journals. Brought to you in part by Eureka for Life Outdoors. We set up our camp uh, in amongst this little arctic oasis of moats of incredible clear fresh water. It seemed kind of odd because we'd never camped in anything like this before up here, but earlier I think we stumbled upon the reason why it's here. An amazing huge slab of ice hidden under the earth. The ice starts within about a foot of the surface and extends all the way down into the water. It must be a remnant of an old glacier because we didn't find any of the spots quite like this along the way. Wow, just, just amazing. You know, I do these painting trips to paint landscapes, but it's little discoveries like these along the way that just make these excursions so much more than I ever expect. Well, what a change a couple of hours can make. Uh, just a short while ago, Carl and I were at Tank Fjord getting ready to, uh, oh, I don't know, relax for the evening, do our work on the laptop, get caught up with all that stuff. And... <laughs> are you in a hurry, Corey? Corey? It seems like we are now because uh, we unexpectedly have a plane waiting for us. Uh, heading to Eureka tonight, uh, staying there before going to Resolute. There. Well, I changed the plan again. Carl had to go all of a sudden. Now you have to go like two seconds ago. Now you're going. Got right up in here. And uh, now we find ourselves here. We're actually in Eureka. The uh, plane had to come by this way and uh, stay overnight and then move on to your Resolute tomorrow. So we have ourselves, uh, I guess, an evening and a morning to check out Eureka while we're on this trip. <laughs> Well, it's about six o'clock in the morning. A good night's sleep in a five-star accommodations of the Eureka weather station here. At one point, it was just a weather station across the road, the old building. But uh, they opened this one up in 2006 and it's become hotel and accommodations for stragglers coming through town like ourselves. They release two, uh, two weather balloons every day. Uh, this is at the same time around the world to keep track of the weather and uh, to get an idea what's going on. So we've been invited to check out this uh, bi-daily event over at this building here called the Helium Building or the Hydrogen Building or something like that and they're gonna tell us a bit more about it and see what it's all about. Look at this, have you ever seen a garage for a balloon? Because anyway when we started the balloons, the instruments were about that big. Okay. and a lot heavier, so the balloons were about at least twice the size of that. Well, there's just gas at the top of it, but okay. as it goes up, it just expands. <laughs> That's neat. As this one being rubber, it expands and eventually bursts. So this is, this is fast. And there she goes. We made it back from Eureka uh, from our little side trip there and we are now back at Polar Continental Shelf in Resolute Bay. So tomorrow I move on to Yellowknife, heading up to Wilberforce Falls in Bathurst Inlet. Well now this is uh, something new for us. Carl and I are down by the shore just behind Resolute Bay watching beluga whales breaching behind us. Earlier this morning they were uh, teamed up with some narwhal, I guess, all in this area and had a feeding frenzy. There's a whole pot of them back there. There's like at least six or eight of them. Sure beats marine land. All right, there, there we go. Well, there we are. Time to part ways after, uh, 
I guess about a month up here. He's been great company, so I'm gonna miss him. Although I'm sure he's not gonna miss me because he can't wait to get back to his family back home. It's goodbye, it's farewell, but I'll probably see him in about three weeks uh, after we get back home at some point. Doodle. <laughs>